Hey everyone, welcome to part two of creating a realistic jellyfish in 3D Studio Max and Sculptress. And now we're going to get our hands dirty with V-Ray and we're going to start to light this guy up and we're going to add some cool materials that just really kind of add that f uh, that underwater flare that you're looking for that uh, really kind of stands out for these jellyfish. It's going to make it uh, worthwhile. So let's get to it and um, we'll set up a s very uh, basic lighting uh, setup here. And what we'll do is we'll come over to our tab here, we'll look under the lights section, we'll hit V-Ray Light, we'll make sure that we're selected to Dome. Okay, we'll select that guy and just lay that out, like so. Okay. Just take the realistic shading off here. We'll, bring, we'll hit M for our Material Editor, and we will now use a gradient ramp as our um, environment lighting. All right, so this is gonna give us a nice uh, kind of gradient fall off that's gonna act as kind of an underwater um, reflections and color that's gonna um, pretty much light through this jellyfish. So what we'll do here is we're gonna select the um, V-Ray dome light here. Uh, I have a resolution of 2048. I um, probably don't need to go that crazy with it at this moment, but that's okay. We'll just put it as is now. We'll drag over our gradient to the uh, use texture slot here, and we'll make sure that it's on an instance. So we'll hit OK, and um, we'll come over to where it's environment. So, well, we'll put it to environment, and we'll come over and make sure our mapping is set to spherical environment. All right, so this is good. This is set up nice. We'll just hit 90 degrees, okay, and make sure that the, the black is at the bottom here. All right, and we're going to use this as kind of our control. So what we can do here is drag out. Or actually, sorry, we already dragged that. Um, now what we just need to do is come up here, make sure the light is invisible. Um, for now, we're going to make sure that the effect diffuse and effect specular and reflections are turned on, um, and our multiplier is at one. That's okay. So we can get a, a preview going here. So we'll go to our render setup tab. Okay, we are on V-Ray. We just have to come down to our drop down here and make sure we're on active shade mode. We'll also check the warn warnings. We'll take those off. Okay, we don't need to be bothered with that at the moment. Uh, I might bring our trade step up and I'm going to go and use um, the engine as CPU for now. Okay, we're not gonna do any GPU rendering at this moment. Okay, we'll hit the active shade button here and we will see what we have. So we got a, our gray uh, shader applied, okay? But now what we can do is start to play with um, the lighting a bit here. And actually, before I make this invisible, we can check that guy back on. We can kind of see where our gradient, gradient is uh, laid out here. So we're gonna want to um, go with maybe a dark blue. the bottom here okay we'll add another uh, point we'll darken this up as well we can bring this guy up okay and we'll go with this a light blue Delete this point out. Whoop. Deleting the wrong guy out here. Let's just delete. Okay, and that should work. That kind of gives us a nice gradient. Now, what we can do is brighten this guy up a bit. We'll go to our outputs um, and we'll just bring this guy up to about, and I'll see what 20, oh, that's too bright. Maybe 10, about 5. Okay, and this, I believe this will work for now. Okay. Um, we got a little bit of a uh, mesh problem there. We, we can uh, fix that a little bit later. Um, but other than that, this is looking pretty good. This should do for our. I might go maybe 4.5. Darken up just a bit. Okay, we can always tweak these settings a little bit later.
but that should that should do. Okay, so we're we're gonna select our light, our dome light here, and we're just gonna turn off our. Um, we're just gonna make it invisible here. So let's just go back, invisible, and now we got something to work with here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our material. Okay, we'll call this um, jellyfish. Mat one. And we're just gonna come up to our uh, get material. We'll select the V-Ray material. We can drag this guy on to so we'll just like the whole mesh and we'll work with that. Okay, subdivisions, I'm gonna bring them up to about 16 for now. We'll start with that. And um, for refraction, we're gonna make sure we have effect shadows turned on. And we're gonna start applying some reflection. Okay, so we can darken this guy up a bit, something like this. Okay, so you can see we got a nice blue kind of going off uh, around the um, roundness of the uh, and the creases where the tentacles uh, meet the um, the head of the jellyfish. So that's really nice. It's kind of giving us a nice um, look there. And we're not gonna uh, get into V-Ray, um, the SSS shader. We're just gonna go with a pretty much like a glass, a frosted style glass, um, because when you see jellyfish in the water, um, they're pretty much see-through, uh, and they got a lot of kind of glow around them, and they um, they very much jump out um, as kind of like a, a glass kind of material. Whereas if they're outside sitting uh, in the sand, they then look like well jelly, and they have a kind of a, a translucent look to them. Uh, and that's where I pretty much, if it was an outdoor, sitting outside or something, I don't know if I was going to have it laying out of the water, I would then use the SSS shader. Um, but this is going to be really neat, and this will work quite nicely. So we're going to come into our refraction uh, area here, and we're just going to bring this guy down. Okay, so we can refract it now. So it's kind of like a water material at this moment, um, which is pretty interesting. But... Um, we also got to add some inner color, and that's by the fog. Okay, so if we change the fog and we bring this to like a blue, okay, we start to lose um, our uh, refraction. So what we got to do here is come to our fog multiplier, and we can bring this down to like a 0 0.02. And look at this, we're going to see everything come back. But we also have, um, if we go back to the white, where it was before, um, our, re our reflections inside um, of this material kind of brighten up. But we're going to kind of tint it by putting in this blue. Okay, so that's going to really help kind of sell the, um, the inside here. Let's see if I can find a jellyfish, uh, something that I'm kind of referencing off of right now. It's on the other screen here. Okay, so here's this kind of vibe that we're going with something with a blue and it's very glow it's got a very much of a glow around it and then you can see it's very see-through but there's also some frosted look kind of to it so we're kind of going for this look and right now obviously we're not seeing that but things are going to change as we begin to um, add some glossiness to our refraction okay but what's crucial is that when you render you also want to make sure that your subdivisions are high enough so it does get a, uh, a lot of the noise um, kind of it pretty much hides a lot of that noise that you'll see so if you were to leave this at a default of 8 and you were to render this with a glossiness of say 0.8 you're going to see a lot of um, a lot of noise inside the uh, materials and it kind of uh, it just doesn't look as good so let's go to 0.8 here let's try that okay and this will just soften up and it actually gives it that jelly kind of look to it. So 
So you can really see some really nice details that are added. So we're getting closer to this image here, um, but we still uh, have some work uh, to do and try to get some a uh, little bit more color into this guy as well. So if I want, I could add a little bit of um, some refraction color, and that will give us some really vibrant blue uh, look now to this uh, material. Okay, so it doesn't look that interesting up here in the ed material editor, but when you see it here, you're actually seeing some quite nice results in the uh, in the preview in the Active Shade uh, window. So this is working quite nice, but we still got a few more things to do. But as you can see, um, and it's whatever color you want your jellyfish to be, you can just apply these colors here and change it. So if, you, if you're if you looking for it to be a red or whatever, it's just changing these two um, uh, windows here, or the refract and the uh, fog color, um, you're going to see some uh, different results. It just gives you some quite interesting uh, look to the uh, jellyfish. So we can use this, and we could if we want, we could add a um, self-illumination to the material, but I'm actually going to just use post uh, to, uh, I'm actually bringing in post and just change the uh, glow there, or make a glow, and that should really uh, kind of um, take care of that. But there's really not much to this uh, besides that we can now um, let's try to render something here. Go to our render setup, come over to our protection window here, and I'm just going to actually go to a progressive subdivisions at 100. Well, let's see, um, I don't, don't take no longer than three minutes. But I can leave it at max subdivisions 100. That's okay. So if I was to render this guy right now, let's see if I should put the save frames on. Okay, I'm just going to let this render a bit here. Okay, this, this should be good enough for uh, an example here. We can turn on our lens effects here. And we can add a bloom. Okay, and if we bring down our weight a little bit here, we don't want it too bright. Okay, and we can tighten up the shape just a bit. Okay, you can also add some glare. Okay, I don't want it too blurry, but I'm just kind of getting something here interesting. Our exposure, we can bring that up. Okay, U saturation, if you want, you can change the color here as well. Okay, like something like this. Okay, we're getting closer to this. So let's bring this guy back up. So as you can see, this is starting to work nicely, especially with the lens effects that are built in the V-Ray. Um, and we're starting to get closer with the glow. So you can add this, or if you're going into uh, After Effects or Photoshop, you can add the glow later, and that really helps. Uh, so we don't have to really do the self-illumination to the material. Um, at this point. So we're very close uh, to the material and it did not take too long. It was just pretty much changing a lot of the glossiness, well, the glossiness of the material and the refraction um, and then giving ourselves some fog color. I put the fog uh, multiplier to uh, 0 0.02 and then um, added some uh, Fresnel reflection and uh, making sure our subdivisions are going to be a little bit higher. And so for final I'd like to maybe even increase these to 24 or even 64, uh, depending on uh, how much uh, you want to remove this noise, okay? So another thing that we have to make sure, if you're, if you're going to go into post work later on, you might want the color plus alpha. That way um, 
you get a, a see-through um, with the, uh, the opacity. You get a little bit of opacity to the uh, to the shader itself. So that way, uh, so if I was to render this guy again, for the people that don't know uh, what that does, now it's going to come up really weird here, like this orangish color. That's okay, uh, but you'll get a little bit of a see-through. So going in post, um, if you want to put a uh, a background it's going to see through a little bit of these darker areas so controlling your uh, glossiness will definitely change so if you're going maybe you want to bring this a little higher you want to see a little bit more detail with inside the uh, jellyfish uh, you can do that by coming in here and maybe going to 0.9 render that and you can see you start to see a little bit more detail which is uh, personal preference, but uh, you can see that's looking quite nice. All right, so that takes care of um, the materials, and if you want, you could start to to uh, copy some of these guys. Okay, let's bring one over here. Okay, I'm just gonna group this and call it. Jellyfish B. Grab this guy. Jellyfish A. Okay. We can get a camera. Dropped into our scene here. Okay, and we might want to maybe just I don't know, modify this guy, make him a little smaller. We can kind of modify him so that it looks different, and uh, maybe it's he's in motion. This jellyfish, so we can add a FFD modifier. Okay, control points so oh, four four. Let's try two, two, two. Hmm. I might want one in the middle. Actually, two, two, three. We'll see if we got enough points here. Control points. This is not bad. I bring that up a bit. Squish this guy. Actually, maybe just take these guys, squish him a bit. Just make it a little bit different than the other one. Okay, like it's in motion, maybe. Grab these guys. I'm trying to think what I can do with this here. So, if I want, I can also add an. FFD as well. Okay, I might do the same here. Two, two, three. Or actually, um, let's go back. Actually, maybe I want to. There we go. Okay, control points. Actually, before I move it, I'm just going to copy this guy. Okay, we're just going to just make this guy look a little bit different than the other one. So I just want to paste this. Let's change this control point as well. that I'm having a little bit of a some mesh issue there. I'll we'll see if I can work around that. What's going on here? So it's just grabbing the mesh. So maybe that's just not what we want to do with this. 
Another another solution that you can do is use some soft selection. As you can already see, I've been using it. It's one of actually my favorite tools to use. When it comes to doing uh, some slight tweaking. it a bit okay so that'll work I mean it's just changing it up a bit making like it's kind of in motion a bit just to give it a difference than this guy here so kind of move him more towards the center could also just angle this guy a little bit differently maybe like they're kind of going in the same direction but just a little bit some variation there. Okay, we'll go to render setup here and we'll try to 800 by 600. I'm going to do 1000 by actually 800 by 600. We'll lock this down the width 1000 by 750. That should be good. Okay, I'm going to go with, I want, I don't know, give me, uh, give me about eight minutes. Max subdiv, okay, we'll just leave that as is. Okay, we'll bring our noise down to 0 0.002 or 0 0.001. Change this guy, make sure our subdivisions are maybe about 24 on the sampling. Okay, we don't need any GI in the scene. 32 buckets. Well, actually, we're doing progressive, so that's okay. We can leave that out. Okay, and um, let's give it a... Um, hmm. We don't have to have an a image filter. We'll just render it as is here. Now, before I render, I have to set up our camera. So I'm just going to see this. Just cancel this guy out real quickly here. We just got to change our camera settings. So we'll select our camera. Okay, and um, I'm going to leave it as is and by default. And I'm going to just turn off our exposure. Okay, also we can. Um, Use depth of field. Okay, we'll do about. Uh, that's fine. We can do about a five. Let's see on the uh, blades of the bokeh, but we can go to depth of field sampling. We'll turn that on. Okay, and we'll make sure that we tighten up our depth of field by bringing the F number down. Okay, maybe something like this here. So we're gonna go about a two. And um, we're gonna make sure our exposure controls. I'm just gonna turn those off in our vignette. Okay, we're gonna do. We're gonna work uh, with that in post. Now we hit render. I think we're gonna be in a better spot here. There we go. Okay, so you can see we got a really, really nice um, uh, glow coming around the um, the jellyfish here. We also get um, and the, the head of the jellyfish that is, um, and we get these nice little details. And we can really, as we let this render, we can uh, let this uh, render out with the depth of field, and then it, we can get some really nice results in post. All right, so I'm going to let this render, and we'll return, and we'll start to just kind of add some more effects to this guy. Okay, we'll get the background going, and um, we'll finalize up this uh, video tutorial. Okay, guys, I'll see you in just one second. Okay, so we stopped the render and uh, it's applied our lens effects and you can see we got a really nice glow added to our scene. Uh, and we also here have our alpha working um, and this should work quite nicely and we're gonna bring it into Photoshop and we'll start to tweak this image just a bit more. All right, so let's get into Photoshop.
Okay, so now that we're in Photoshop, we can start adding our background to our jellyfish. So right here, as you can see, um, we have now uh, the alpha working quite nicely. We have uh, both of the um, jellyfish in our shot. One is out of focus. And now we can start to apply our background. So let's change our layer here so that it says jellyfish. Change that. Okay, we'll also create a new layer. Bring this down and we're gonna just double click on this guy, BG for background. And we're just gonna use a black for now. Okay, for our background. We're gonna change, um, and later what, what I've noticed here was we have lost our glow. So we're gonna come up to our filter in a bit here after we get our background and we're gonna add our glow back. All right, so it just didn't apply over from V-Ray uh, into uh, our PNG here, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do is um, we need to add a gradient to our uh, background image here. So we can hold uh, our bucket here, okay, as you can see, and we got the gradient tool. So as we have this, I actually already have a setting applied, but it's pretty much a transparent um, selection here, and I just changed this color to a blue, and then it just kinda, it, falls off to nothing here. So if I go like this, we get some really nice kind of underwater uh, look here, okay? So, and that's pretty much just by having this um, the little sphere, I don't know what this mode is called, but it gives us a little hints of, um, it's almost like a star in a way. Um, just little hints of blue here. So maybe if we want, Whoops, maybe if we want, um, what we could do is go with the a mode like this that has the gradient, which is the gradient in the middle, or we can actually just go with the regular, the standard here. Something like this. Okay, we can also add another layer um, we can change that to something like a darker blue as well. You'll see here in just a minute what I'm going to do. Okay, we can add this as a, let's see here, just a regular blue. We can blend these guys together. So if I want, I can actually say multiply. No, see uh, the screen. Hard light. Let's try soft light. Let me just kind of control this image just a bit here. Okay, so that just kind of gives you a, a little bit of an underwater look. Uh, you can play with this as much as you want. Okay, we can also add maybe a little bit of fog to this. So to do that, um, we can add a layer, put it on the top. Okay, let's say fog. Okay, and let's select something and see if we can go to our paint bucket here and let's select this blue here. Okay, and then actually we're gonna do a gradient, so we're gonna need the gradient tool. Might wanna just change this color a bit. So I'm just trying to get a little bit of a fog going on here. Okay, we can start to kind of paint some stuff out here. This just gives us a little bit more environment.
we want, we can actually do soft light, see if that looks like nothing there. Screen, screen's quite nice. Just get some a little bit of rays in there. And just kind of pretty it up just a bit, you know, make it a little bit more like they blend in. Probably add some a little bit of noise to the scene as well. Uh, that always helps. Okay, but we can actually do this later. So if we were to grab all these guys and collapse them. Oops. Let's grab layer one here. Let's grab these guys, grab these guys. Let's say we want to add a little bit of noise. Okay, you can also do some scratches. Let's see if I can find something that has that noise is fine. This will just kind of break up the image a bit. Point zero four. Whoops. Point four. Okay, so we got some break up there. Go to our lens filter. We can start kind of adding a little bit of, um, let's see what other kind of things that we can add to this to just give it some interesting, um, something interesting here. Let's see. Something like this. You can also add, whoop, I don't know if I can get back to that. There we go, we'll hit OK. OK, maybe we'll add some glow. Filter gallery again. Come over to our stylize, or it's actually, sorry, distort. Diffuse glow. OK, and let's bring up the glow. Three. Hit OK. And now also maybe what I want to do is add a adjustment layer here. Let's go to color balance. Okay, let's get some. Uh, let's make it a little bit more blue. Alright guys, that concludes this video tutorial and I hope you learned from it and you can create uh, your own jellyfish. And uh, stay tuned for more video tutorials at www.renderspaz.com. We're going to also be posting a form on the site pretty soon so that you can actually go to the form. If you have any questions or comments, you can post or even in showing off uh, some of the work that you've been creating uh, with these video tutorials. Uh, you can show off your work there. and. Um, uh, get some uh, feedback. So we're going to create this community uh, within renderspaz.com and it's going to be um, a, a great thing to look forward to and also we got some very special um, products coming in the near future so stay tuned for those. So all right guys keep rendering on and have a good weekend or rest of the weekend that is and um, we'll see you at the next in the next video tutorials coming soon. All right see you later guys.